When I sleep, my spirit slips away from my body and dances naked with the devil. <laughs> my corrupt nature is empty of grace, bent unto sin, only unto sin, and that continues. <laughs> be the witch of the wood. Liar. Liar. I am. Show me mercy. Bah, bah, bah. What else can you What else? Show me that light. Every family has a black sheep. You know, the one person who, for better or worse, just feels different from everybody else. Maybe you like movies that your siblings and parents just don't enjoy. Or maybe you're more into the arts, where the rest of your family are into sports or academics. Or maybe you're a blood-marked hellion who's destined to wind up streaking through the forest with a coven of flying witches. And that's just not your family's idea of a good time. We'll definitely be talking more about that last one, but the point I'm making is that each of us at some point in our lives have felt like an unwelcomed outsider who wants to simultaneously fit in and stand out. Such is the case for Thomason, the oldest of five kids in 17th century New England where her and her family have just been banished from their community for holding different beliefs than their neighbors. Today's movie is a haunting, slow burn tale of estrangement and exile which, much like the film's antagonist, takes on many forms throughout the story. So today we're going to break down the success and important impact of 2015's The Witch, while also diving deep into what this movie can tell us about finding our place in a world that otherwise doesn't accept us. It's a dark story, to be sure, but I believe it's also a very personal story to the filmmaker behind it, which makes for an interesting sense of relief and liberation by the time the credits roll. For those looking for an excess of gore and flashy kills, you may soon find yourself wandering beyond the slice and dice of slasher cinema and instead being taken on a more cerebral and psychological journey through the mind of Robert Eggers in his first directorial outing, The Witch. I'm Kier with Joe Blow Horror, and you're watching Deconstructing. In 2015's The Witch is a slow burn paranormal horror film directed by Robert Eggers and starring Anya Taylor Joy and the always exceptional Ralph Ineson. And of course, this movie was the one that really shot A24 from just another independent art house studio to the highbrow production company that's now responsible for some of the genre's most acclaimed fare. The movie follows Thomason, played by Anya Taylor Joy, and she's the teenage daughter of William and Catherine, a recently exiled family who was forced to build their own farm away from their community after a religious dispute. When the family starts their new life, Thomason and her siblings begin experiencing what they believe to be encounters with a witch who resides in the woods. Along the way, we're in for some disturbing material as Thomason's family begins to suspect her of being a witch herself, based on her rebellious and free-spirited behavior. It is a thing, how I crave to sink my teeth into thy pink flesh. <laughs> This movie can be analyzed in any number of ways, but today we're going to break it down using our four key categories. First, we'll talk about the film's origin and how it got from idea to production. Then we'll get into the movie's legacy, which should be interesting seeing as this movie really set the A24 fire ablaze for the coming years. After that, we'll lighten the mood with some trivia where I give you some fun facts about the film, and we'll end it all by talking about the film's X Factor, where I search for the one thing that that takes this film from an acceptable paranormal haunt to a classic horror film in its own right. So if you're ready, then say your prayers and don't forget to like and subscribe and let's hit play on The Witch. Now, in order for me to really break down why this movie works, I need to first talk about its writer and director, Robert Eggers. Eggers was born in New York, but mostly raised in New Hampshire, which he's gone on record saying is a huge inspiration for his work in writing The Witch. Eggers was born to a single mother who later married a college professor, and Eggers stated that The Witch is a personal story to him, and if you ask me, it shows. The filmmaker attended the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York City where he found his home, now being a New York City resident. All of this seems important to the movie in my opinion. Eggers states that he had a fear of 
of witches growing up, and he wanted to center his story around that fear. And Thomason feeling like an outsider in her family also seems to be a theme that Eggers intentionally emphasizes in the writing. Not to mention, the movie's conclusion could simply be an allegory for Eggers embracing the arts and his new life among like-minded artists and feeling a sense of emancipation from the life of academia that he was raised in. In any case, the original scripts that Robert Eggers had written and pursued making were all declined multiple times for being, quote, too weird and too obscure, which must have been true considering that the least weird and least obscure script to get picked up was this one, which is still quite weird and quite obscure. Robert Eggers stated about making the film, If I'm gonna make a genre film, it has to be personal and it has to be good. When he finally was able to secure funding for his movie, Eggers worked exhaustively with his production crew as well as local museums to make sure that the Puritan era of 1600s New England was accurately displayed as possible. Everything from the wardrobe, the set design, the cutlery, and even the patterns found on some of the textiles were recreations of historically accurate pieces and designs. Even the characters' unique accents were carefully crafted to match a newly settled colonial family. Eggers even shot the film in as primitive a way as possible by only using natural sunlight and candlelight to light his scenes, and not to mention the soundtrack that evokes musical instruments of the times. The movie was given a budget of only $4 million, which is very small, but also manageable for such an intimate story. Anya Taylor-Joy recalled working on the film and stated, quote, Everything from the costumes to the actual set, it was all so real. Things like the costume and the way we're speaking, it's just so of the time, and so it transported us. The movie was released in theaters in February of 2016, and the rest, as they say, is history. Which was originally released at Sundance Film Festival in January of 2015, but upon being screened for audiences at the festival, A24 and DirecTV purchased the film's distribution rights and scheduled its theatrical release for a year later. At the time, A24 was specializing in distribution of low-budget films, and their catalog prior to this movie was very limited. They'd worked with projects like Spring Breakers and Room being among their most notable at the time. However, securing the rights to the US US distribution of The Witch not only led to a very fruitful relationship with Eggers on his next two films, but also launched the now iconic status of A24 and their knack for producing hit indie fare like Ty West's X and Pearl, as well as Ari Aster's Hereditary and Midsommar. Or is it Midsummer? I, I never know. The real legacy of this movie is the amount of opportunity it created for other filmmakers with unique ideas and visions for their film, and that goes well beyond the horror genre. A24 has produced comedy films like Funny Pages, as well as romantic dramas like Past Lives, and many, many others. And all of these movies may owe a small piece of their success to Eggers' feature debut. So when your film buff friend wears his A24 dad hat at your next function, make sure you mention The Witch. See if they respect the OG as much as they should. I will not play a fool to children's games. This is no sport, William. This is a movie that was never meant to have a sequel or kick off any franchises, although Eggers' preceding films were also similar in theme to this film to create an interesting catalog of increasingly mind-bending films. Hell, if it wasn't for this movie, we would never have gotten The Lighthouse or The Northman, which honestly, I don't think I could live without. But the lasting impact that this movie made comes from the bold and confident direction of its first-time filmmaker. Eggers didn't make this movie like like a rookie. He studied. He went deep in order to deliver something truly interesting that visually told a story. This movie is often praised for its ability to pack the entire story into a short runtime with minimal exposition. See, the movie tells you what it's about and what you need to know in every single frame. And it trusts the audience to figure it out without having to be told too much. That is confident filmmaking. There's a picture language to this movie that provides a mood and an unfolding mystery within its images. Simply, this movie's legacy is the trust that Hollywood gained for Robert Eggers and the entire A24 organization off of this one movie, which, by the way, made over 10 times its original budget at the box office.
Now, here's an interesting palette cleanser before we get deep and talk about the finer details of this movie. Did you know that the spelling of this movie, The Witch, is spelled with two V's instead of a W? Turns out, that's because that's how the word witch was commonly spelled in the 17th century. The letter W was not very common in those days. I still have a habit of jokingly referring to this movie as the Vavitch, which either annoys or confuses just about everybody. Am I alone in that? Comment down below if you do that too. It's not natural. And before we move on, let's see if you can answer this question. Which animal appears multiple times in the movie and was considered in the 17th century to be a sign that a witch is nearby? A. A hare or rabbit. B. Bats. C. Weed rats. Or D. Cockroaches. Comment your answer down below. Is it that time already? Because truthfully, I'm not prepared to be at this point in the video. It's not that I think this movie is particularly better than any of the movies that we've broken down, and it's not that I can't find a good aspect to this movie to praise above the rest. It's more that this movie means a lot to me. I mentioned before that every family has a black sheep, and I stand by that. And it isn't always a bad thing. See, the witch focuses mostly on the story from Thomason's perspective. She is well aware that she's the odd one out in her family, and it gets made increasingly clear throughout the movie that she is different from everybody else. Her religious beliefs, her behavior, her idea of a joke, it's all different. She's like Matilda and the Wormwoods in that she feels almost foreign to her own family, yet doesn't necessarily mind being the black sheep, but sort of embraces it. And I'll make any man or thing else vanish I like. No. I also kind of wanted to rant about how much I appreciate the tension packed into every shot of this movie. From the cinematography by Jaron Blaschke that pulls your gaze towards the darkness, to the sinister yet somber voice of William, to the disturbing final scene where Thomason is forced to kill her own mother before joining her new family in the most cinematic witchcraft ritual imaginable, and even the lasting hole in my stomach from the deaths of Thomason's siblings. You're right! Of evil, you have made a covenant with devil! But what I really love about this theme is how much it actually says about Thomason. See, her family wants to send her away to serve another family because they think that Thomason is too different and doesn't have anything in common with them. Yet the entire family themselves were just banished from their own community for that very same reason. The family was the black sheep of their community. Thomason was always gonna be a rebel. She was always gonna find her own way. She didn't hate her family for hating her, but instead she honored them the one way she could. She found her own slice of the world where she was free to be herself, just like her family did. And if there's one thing that stands out as the special sauce of this movie, it's that Eggers was bold enough to find his own path, telling his own story his own way. And he did it on his very first try. Then take your leave and trouble us no further. Uh -huh. 